this is Nancy and I'm back with my third show and tell of the hashtag 52 tags handmade hosted by Ann Brooke. Um, oops. Oh well. Um, so my first tag is or our first tag was yo-yos and um or sepik puffs and um usually unless it's a whole piece of fabric made of the yo-yos i think of a little yo-yo as being a flower and so i wanted my flower to be a morning glory so i took my fabric and i dyed it with brushos to um uh, replicate a morning glory, you know, dark around the edges and light in the center. And I used um, diaper uh, fabric because I love the twill and texture of a diaper fabric. It's so lightweight and lofty and it's just so sweet. Um, the base of my tag fabric is a sheer curtain with rayon embroidery and, and the uh, center of each embroidery circle has a little jewel or a rhinestone type thing in it. I did my vine and leaf stitching with a back stitch and then I went over my uh, back stitching leaves with a blanket stitch and I stitched on top of it so there'd be a little extra elevation or dimension in the leaves to give it some more dynamic, uh, make it more interesting. Um, and that's my first tag. It's on whitewash tag and it's stitched down like Anne stitches them down. I don't think there's anything else to say about that tag. This time everything was so simple. Um, I think the next tag was the um, the rings uh, with the blanket stitch around them. When I first saw the prompt I felt like I should use rusty washers, so I got out and I started um, rusting fabric and thread. And um, then I didn't end up using washers at all. Um, I ended up using cardstock for my circles, my rings. Um, my washers were um, just too bulky and um, the ones I wanted to use weren't rusty, so I, I trimmed my paper. I actually took three pieces of cardstock and uh, glued it together, and then I took this Sizzix circle die and I cut out um, the smallest circle. And then I took uh, Tim Holtz um, inner office envelope die and you know the little two little um, things you put the string around to close the envelope I used that to cut out the center and that actually is just perfect it was actually the same size as the washers I would have liked to use um, but I just felt they were too heavy and they just didn't go with what I was working on so I made my rings with the cardstock and um, these are not attached to the bottom, they're just laying there. The antique lace that I have on here, when I pulled it out of the little bin, um, it was wrinkled and bent just like this, and when I laid it down on my little fabric to just put it aside to look at it going with everything, it looked so pretty there, I decided not to press it out and not to um, move it and put it some way else on there um, to make this tag when I thought I was going to be using elements of rust to put my blanket stitch on I went out and I um, rusted a piece of fabric I took this piece of fabric and I folded it down right here and I wrapped it around a rusty can I keep cans and nuts and bolts and all kinds of things rusting in my backyard at all times I live by the beach so it's real easy to rust things <laughs> Um, and then, um, then I trimmed this piece out because that's what I wanted to use in my tag. To rust my threads, I took the real pretty sparkly like Christmas cotton or Christmas crochet thread that we made, crochet 
bells and angels with in the 70s. Um, and this is probably still from the 70s. But I wrapped it around a can until it was rusty. I, When I took these items outside to rest them, I kept them wet for three days and just left them out there until I liked the density of the rust. I brought them in and I um, washed them and rinsed them and let them dry and then I made my tag. Um, I wanted you to see, because it's hard to see on here, how beautiful and delicate the lace is. It is so gossamer and sweet. I just, I just can't get over how precious this lace is and it's like, I can't even imagine how it would have been used except for maybe baby clothes or something delicate like lingerie. It's just so sweet. Anyway, that's, that's that tag. Just a simple blanket stitch around the, my little cardboard washer. <laughs> and um, I stitched it on the same way as the other. I do have my base fabric and a little piece of um, diaper cloth under all of the, I just love diaper fabric because it makes it uh, poofy without being batting. The next tag was blanket stitch and I took uh, unbleached muslin and bleached muslin and I made my base fabric. I put a little bleached muslin pocket on my tag and I put a little uh, stuffed heart on there with a, both of them are uh, with a blanket stitch and then I made a little um, needle keep with um, a piece of my uh, digital print of embroidery and the reason I needed a needle keep was because this is more than just these blanket stitch it's all of these blanket stitches <laughs> So I just love blanket stitch. I do a lot of crazy quilting. Well, not a lot lately, but I used to do a ton of crazy quilts. And blanket stitch variations are just the most fun and exciting combination of stitches you can possibly imagine. I love finding them and locating them. This little tag, I could have made 10 pages. It was, uh, there's just so many variations. Um, I won't do them all, but this one, because it's not, easy to understand because they're not connected. It's just simply the blanket stitch not connected, which is done almost exactly like the fly stitch. Um, this is the twin or mirror the chevron. This is the double where you do it one direction and turn around and go the other direction. And this is a one with a little knot in the top. And I forget what the name of it is, but after you make this stitch, you go around it one more time and then go on to the next. And it puts a little knot uh, at each little segment and it makes it a little more um, textural. I love it on the quilts and this one of course is my favorite because it's so so unique. Uh, you, it's almost like you don't know what you're looking at when you're trying to figure out how to do that stitch without directions. But that's this tag I love. I love um, how it turned out. It's really sweet because I'm I basically enjoyed myself because I did a little bit of paperwork and I adore paper. Anyway, that's that one. It's so cute. Attach the same way. Just look at all those cute blanket stitches. Um, the next tag was um, layers, lots of layers and things golden. And I almost didn't do the gold situation because I have so little gold. I really had to dig. You should see my studio. It's a wreck from looking for something gold. Um, this was a, a drapery uh, panel, a draper, a silk sam a sample of a silk panel. This So this is only like about a 14 inch square that I had when I got a book of drapery samples. This is um, dress silk, and this little piece right here is dress silk that I got from a place in Los Altos. This is just a regular piece of ribbon. Fortunately, it was gold and found it in my ribbon box. Um, all the stitching I decided to do on here, I wanted to be plain. No, no knots, 
no special technique. I wanted everything to be little straight stitches or running stitches, and that's what I did. This is a little piece of um, fold cotton folded to help. I hadn't found all these things yet, so I pleated a little piece of cotton to add more layers. <laughs> and then I just stitched it uh, with all, all those pleats down, stitched along there and here. The ribbon is couched on with just a straight stitch. Um, this is a piece of um, wire that I used to do um, like a window charm with sea glass and crystals and beads. This is a safety pin that I pinned all of these pieces to this piece. Um, and then I stitched it down. This happens to be the end of a what I would call a hippie belt from when I was a teenager in the 60s. And this is some rivets that I would normally use on a tag or a piece of um, junk journal or artist book with my crop a dial that I only stuck them there. I got them ready to stick there because I felt like I needed more things. As it turns out, I think I could have gotten away with a little less because now the eye activity is not so sparse. It really surprised me how it came together with a lot of layers and texture and everything. And it was kind of um, an exercise or a discipline for me to do something I don't normally do um, is using a particular color and trying to stay away from metallics even though these are metals they are not like the shiny glitzy gold these are more like brass actually when I think about it but anyway that's this tag and that's all of them I had just as much fun as I always have each time it seems simpler than it was before. Um, it's still exciting, which is kind of nice. Um, I was waiting for it to start getting ordinary, but it's never gonna be ordinary. I have a lot of fun watching everyone's videos. It's just very inspiring. I could spend hours on Instagram, flipping through everyone's posts and liking and commenting. It's so fun to comment there and like there because it's just so direct and instant like responses from people and stuff it's really been fun well i hope um you're having as much fun as i am thank you for watching my video and i will see you next month with the next tags for uh, our weekly um challenge Bye-bye for now, everyone.